Now vectors part two, advanced vector operations. So let's start with scalar product, also known as dot product. IB is just going to use scalar product. Scalar just means number. So that means you're going to get a number as an answer. Um, there's two formulas here in your formula sheet. This one we like never use, so don't even ignore it. It's the, it's the only one we care about right there. So we're going to use this equation right here for the our example right there. Now notice this only has two coordinate points, but this has three corresponding parts. Again, don't worry about it. If your thing only has two and this has three, just ignore the third term. When you have three, which we'll do later, you use it. So that's this kind of idea. So let's do a dot product. All you do is follow the formulas, right? You multiply the corresponding parts. So let's say this is V and W. This will be your V1 times W1, so 2 times negative 1, plus and then V2 times W2, so multiply these two, 3 times 4, and you get negative 2 plus 12, which is 10. And that's how easy it is to take the dot product of two things. Okay, let's move on to the next example, just make sure we have this. So now this one has three terms, so this is their V and W. So we're just going to do the exact same way as follow the formula. So you multiply the corresponding parts, 2 times 4, plus multiply the middle parts, 3 times 5, and then finally the last the third terms, negative 1 times 2, so you get 8 plus 12 plus negative 2, which gets you 21. And one more real quick, just to make sure we really have it down. Um, again, if I'm going to dot product these two terms, again, dot product, this means multiply the corresponding parts. So 6 times 2 plus multiply these two, 3 times negative 4. So I get 12 plus negative 12, which actually gives me 0. 0 is a very, very important result. So anytime you take the dot product of two vectors, and you get zero, that's special. That means that those two vectors are perpendicular. Now let's focus more on that right now. Perpendicular vectors. So just like I just, like, just, like I just mentioned, if the dot product of two vectors equals zero, that means that the, those two vectors are perpendicular. So that means that one vector looks like this, and the other vector looks like this, and you get a little right angle between those two vectors. There are lots of ways, so like, same thing, so dot product is equals perpendicular, also means the right angles. I might just say that they're, they form a 90 degree angle, or they might say perpendicular. All those are key terms for, anytime you see any of that stuff, you do this. So let's do an example. So in this example, find P if the two vectors form a right angle. So the key is right there, form a right angle. You see those words, you think a dot b equals zero. So let's say this is my a, let's say this is my b. Now I know if I take the dot product, it should equal zero. So let's do that. Let's take the dot product of these two things. So multiply the first, multiply the, course, the first two corresponding parts, negative two times five plus the next two, two times p, plus the final two. And again, since they form a right angle, it equals zero. And now you just add it, simplify this down a bit, and add like terms, solve it, subtract 14 from both sides, and get 2p equals negative 14, divided by two, and p equals negative seven. So there you go. On to parallel vectors. So vector parts are very straightforward. Parallel vectors are just multiples of each other. That's what that means there. So if you multiply any vector by a constant, then they're parallel. That's it. So like right here, I have the vector negative 2, 6. And let's find three vectors that are parallel. So all you do is get negative 2, 6, the vector negative 2, 6, and multiply by any three numbers, any number you want. So let's say multiply by like 4. So you're going to get negative 8, 24. Now these two are parallel. Let's do another one. So how about let's multiply by a fraction. Let's multiply by negative 1 half. So you're going to get 1, negative 1 times 6 is going to be negative 3. And these two are parallel. Because again, all you did was multiply by a constant. 
That's how simple it is to find parallel vectors. Let's do one final one because I got to find three. So we'll take negative two, six. And I'll multiply that by 10. That's easy to multiply by. You get negative 20 and 60. And again, those two, these two are also parallel because you multiply by a constant. That's the idea. The final advanced vector operation is how to find the angle between two vectors. So if I give you a vector here, and another vector here, let's say a vector v and w, you want to know how to find the angle between those two vectors. Well, just like everything else, there's a formula for it. Right, and we know how to do everything in this formula. That first part, you take the dot product of those two, this, or I should say the scalar product of those two, which we just did up there. And then what we did in the last video, those are just the magnitudes. Again, now absolute value the magnitudes of each one. So you multiply the magnitude of each one. And that's kind of it. You just follow the formula. So let's do an example right here. All right, so right here, find the angle between these two vectors. So let's just make one of them V, the other one W. It doesn't matter which one's which. And let's just find those couple of things. So first, I'm going to need the dot products of V and W. All right, so that's what's multiply across, multiply the corresponding parts. So 2 times 1 plus 3 times 0 plus 1 times negative 3. So 2 plus 0 plus negative 3 or just negative 1. So that's the dot product. So that's this part. Now we need the magnitude of each one. So the magnitude of V, I right, just follow the formula we did earlier, which is you take the square roots of all these squared. So 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared. And you get square root of 4 plus 9 plus 1, or square root of 14. Let's do the same thing for w. You get 1 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 3 squared. So remember when you square negative, it always becomes positive. So 1 plus 0 plus 9, radical 10. Now that we have everything we need, let's plug into our formula right there. So I'm going to have cosine theta equals negative 1 over rad 14 times rad 10. Just type this into your calculator. You're going to get cosine theta equals negative 0 0.08451 roughly. Remember the way you get rid of cosine, if you just want the angle, you do cosine inverse of both sides. So again, we're going to use our calculator and do cosine inverse of both sides. Now you can do this in radians, you get some ugly number you won't understand, but it'll be correct. It's, it's better though if you do this in degrees. So make sure you're in degrees, put that in your calculator, and you're going to get about 94.8 degrees. Now IB loves 3 sig figs, so you generally only want about 3 sig figs your answer. It's a decimal. And that's the idea. So we have one more example to get through, a more complicated version of how to find the angle between two vectors, so right here. Given points a, 3, 5, B, negative 1, 4, and C, 2, negative 2. Find the measure of angle A, B, C. So my guys, when you're familiar geometry, when you want to find the measure of angle, they give you three letters. They just mean the middle one. So find the measure of angle B, basically, is what they're asking. I want to find the measure of angle B. Now, the way you do this, it helps me if I write a little diagram out. So let's say this is A, this is B, and that's C. Remember, you want angle B. So that means that you want the angle from B. So that means you have, you're going B to A is a ray and B to C's array. So you're looking for angle B. Now why is this important? Because now you know your vectors. You have vector BA here. And you have vector BC here. So before I could find the angle between these, these two vectors, I actually got to find these two vectors first, right? So before I could use this form right here, I actually got to find the two vectors. So let's re recap what we did last video. Right, if you want to find BA, that's tip minus tail. So you're going to do A minus B, right? So that's what you do. You always do the tip minus the tail. So nice in this case that'll be three five minus negative one four, which gives us double negative, so four and one. That's the vector B A. Right, and then if I want to find vector B C, so that's gonna be B C. Again, tip minus tail, so C minus B, which in this case would be two negative two minus B, which is negative one four. Again, two negatives make it positive, so three, ooh, negative two minus negative four, negative six. 
So that's BC. Now I have my two vectors. Now I can use the formula cosine theta equals v dot w over magnitude of v magnitude w. Where one of these is v, one of these is w, doesn't matter. Let's say v and w doesn't matter. Right, so now we just got to fill out that formula. So let's do the dot product. So again, you just multiply the corresponding parts, 4 times 3, plus these two, 1 times negative 6. And I get 12 plus negative 6, which is just 6. we got to find the magnitude of each one, so let's find the magnitude of the first one. All right, again, it's using the formula. 4 squared plus 1 squared, so I get radical 16 plus 1, which is radical 17. So now let's find the magnitude of the other one. So the magnitude of BC, which is going to be BC, right? So you take the first term squared plus the square root of the second term squared. So I'm going to get 9 plus 36, radical 45. Okay, so now we can have everything we need for the formula. So I'm going to plug it all in. So cosine theta equals dot product, which we found up here to be 6 over the magnitude of the first term times the magnitude of the second one. I just got to put that into my calculator and I get about 0 0.21693 blah blah blah. And again to get rid of the cosine you take the inverse of both sides, take the cosine inverse of both sides. And again you could do it in radians, it'll be correct, but you're not going to understand as well so if you, unless you do it in degrees. If you do it in degrees you get 77 0.5. So again, three sig figs degrees. And that's saying between those two vectors.